Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today I want to show you how to sew a DIY makeup remover pad. These are great because they're eco-friendly. If you make them as a gift or for yourself, they can be washed and reused over and over again. I have a nice soft white flannel on the back. I made mine three and a half inches, but if you have a size makeup remover pad that you prefer, I don't wear makeup, so I'm not sure exactly on all the different sizes. So if you like it a little bit bigger, you can go ahead and make them larger. But I think this fits right in the hand as a nice little size. And from what I've seen, this is about the size that you can find at the store. Make sure you hang out to the end of the video, and I'm going to show you different ways that you can give this as a gift to store them in the bathroom and to present them to your friends and family. Now the supplies we're gonna to need to make our little makeup remover pads is, I chose a nice white flannel, something that's soft. I'm choosing white, cause this is the part that's gonna to go towards your face and you're gonna be using this to put your makeup remover on and stuff like that, your little whatever cleanser you use and things like that. So a nice white one is good. You're gonna put it up against your eyes and your skin and stuff. So it's better to have white than something that's colored. And since we're using flannel and it does shrink when it gets washed and stuff, and we are gonna wanna wash our pads, go ahead and put this in the wash first. You can probably, depending on how many you wanna make, since we're only gonna be using three and a half inch strips, you can go up to Joann's and if you wanna just buy some flannel, I would suggest maybe buying five or six inches. Get yourself like a quarter yard or a half yard if you wanna make a bunch for gifts. Throw that in the wash and then it'll be all pre-shrunk and your pads won't do anything funky. Or you can just go ahead and be a rebel and just cut your strips up and just use it as is and it'll shrink and it'll be fine, right? We can go ahead and hit them with an iron after they come out of the wash if we have to and it'll be okay. I'm going to make mine with this quilting cotton. It has got these fun little puppy prints on it. Or you can go ahead and use something that maybe is going to match their bathroom. If it's their favorite color. When you're using your, this is going to be on the back side of it. That's going to be touching your hand. But it can still bleed through onto your flannel. So you want to get something that's not really bright and bold colors. You want something nice and calm. Because those brighter colors tend to bleed when they get wet. And if you're putting some type of an astringent or whatever cleaner you're using. Yes, I don't wear makeup. So I don't know what you use to clean your face like that. You don't, you don't want it to have any type of reaction and make the fabric bleed. So something nice and light colored. You can use another white on the other side. I think it'd be fun to have something that they favorite color. Maybe you can find something for the holidays or to match their bathroom. That way they can easily see, because if you put white on white, you could put two pieces of flannel if you wanted, two pieces of white, but you can see which side is which for cleaning, so it makes it a lot easier. But if you use two pieces of flannel, it would make it reversible and it could be used if you're worried about it staining or something like that. But it's really kind of fun to have something colorful in the bathroom, right? Now I have a rotary cutter and a ruler because I am also a quilter, so it's easy for me to cut three and a half inch strips, but you can also just get a piece of cardboard and use a ruler and make a three and a half inch square, and then you can just trace around it on your fabric and just keep moving it along and then cut it out with your scissors that way. Of course, using the rotary cutter and a ruler is gonna make it much quicker. And if you wanna make them round, you can go ahead and just trace around something round. This is going to be a really quick assembly line. We're going to be able to make lots of them. So if you wanna make 20 or 30 of them for one person, or if you wanna make a little set of 10 or 12 for a variety of people and give them as gifts, you can go ahead and go quickly with the square ones. But if you prefer round, it's gonna work just as easily like that just trace around it on both pieces of fabric now I've cut both of my strips at three and a half inches I've given them a good press with a nice hot iron I'm gonna stack them together and then I'm just gonna go ahead and even off the end you don't have to be super duper perfect if they're off just a little smidge or something it's going to still work out fine square off my edge And it's easy to just spin it around or you can just flip it around. And we're just gonna measure off our three and a half inches and cut up a bunch of these up. Now we can go ahead and assembly line sew these. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna have our flannel and then we're gonna take our piece of quilting cotton and we're gonna to wanna to put it right sides down. So we don't wanna see the print up top because we're gonna go ahead and stitch around this and flip it out and it'll be right sides out at that point. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make stacks of these so that I said I can just go ahead and stitch them super fast. I'm going to show you how to stitch them one at a time. And then I'm going to show you how to assembly line stitch them so you can do it much quicker. If you're just using short pieces of fabric, if you lay your cotton right sides down as you cut it, it'll already be prepared to sew and you won't have to worry about flipping them around and matching them all up. So let's go ahead and get this one stitched. Now, since I'm using a white flannel, I have white thread in my bobbin and in the top of my machine. It's just going to make it look a lot nicer because when we're done, we're going to see our thread on the outside and you could use a colored one if you want that contrast, but the white is fine for me. I'm going to stitch a quarter inch seam. My machine automatically goes to 2.0 stitch length. You can go up to a 2.5, 2.8, 3.0 if you want, whatever you're used to stitching with your sewing machine. I'm going to leave a little opening about one inch on any of the sides. I like to do it when I start. I don't have any pins or clips in this because flannel is really grabby. So these stay together really nice. So you don't have to worry about them shifting. But if you're worried about it, you can go ahead and put some clips in it or stick a pin in the center, whatever works for you. So I'm gonna leave my opening. I'm gonna back stitch a little so that when I turn my square out, I don't rip the thread at all and it'll stay nice and secure. And I'm gonna stitch all the way up. I can stitch all the way off And then just turn it this way. Or I can stop a quarter inch from the end. It's usually marked on your foot. Most of them have a little line or something there. And then you just go ahead and turn it. And then we're gonna leave that little opening here and we're gonna back stitch at the end. And cut our thread. Now if you want you can use a little bit of a larger seam allowance if it's easier for you maybe a 3 8 or a half an inch but remember your square is going to be smaller then. This is going to give us about a three inch square all the way around. Now if I want to go super fast as you see I've been putting the cotton fabric down because it just glides through the machine faster that way. The flannel is a little fuzzy it's going to work perfectly fine either way. What I like to do is I like to start at the end on the first one. I'm just gonna sew all the way off. Then I'll take my next piece and butt it up there with a little bit of a space in between, about a quarter inch or so. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep sewing as many as I want, as many as I have. Then I will take this and I will sew the opposite side from where I just stitched. Sewing each one individually all the way around, it just drives me crazy after a while. All that spinning around and around in circles, it just gives me dizzy, right? So if I wanna make just five of them, I'll probably do that or just one of them to test it out or something. But if I'm making a bunch of them for my aunts or my nieces or something like that, and maybe I'm making 20, 50 or 100 of them, I like to do this assembly line sewing like this. Then I'll just snip in between and I will sew down on this side. I haven't timed it or anything. It just feels more productive to me. It feels like it's going faster. Now this is our last side. If you wanna put a pin in it to remind yourself, we need to leave an opening to turn it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a little. Back stitch. I'm not even going to cut my thread. I'm just going to lift my needle up and I'm going to pull it through the machine a little. About an inch or so away. Do another back stitch. And then go down through here. It might be a good idea to have that pin in there so that you don't get sewing like a mad woman and just kind of go like a crazy lady and sew them all up and then you have to pick out your stitches. This side always takes a while, of course, but I feel like, of course, do it whatever way works for you, but for me, it just feels more productive. You can always do the opening first so you don't have to worry about it, and then after that, it, everything will go super fast and you'll think you've done it really super quick. 
Then we snip in between. And I just cut this thread here. It's going to be on the inside. You can cut it on either side if you want, but I just go ahead and cut it right here like that. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and take it over and give it a nice iron and get all those stitches to go ahead and set down into the fabric, or you can just go ahead and move on to the next step. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna trim off these corners. You see how, because of the way I stitched it, it goes off the edge here and here. That gives me a perfect little diagonal right there to cut that little bit off. It's gonna take the bulk out of the corners. You can always trim a little off of each side if you want also. You just wanna make sure you leave at least an eighth of an inch away from that seam. You don't wanna clip into your seam because of course then it would unravel. And if you did clip in your seam, you can go ahead and just make a new one and just have that one be a little bit smaller than the others. Maybe that's one you keep for yourself. Now these are the, this is the one I stitched all the way around so you can see the stitches there. I can do the same thing, just snip it. It's just the ones that I went off of the edge. It has that nice little, it makes it just have that little spot right there for me to see and I can just trim it just like that and I can go a little bit quicker and not to worry about getting too close. If it's the first time you're trimming corners or something, you know, take it slow, nothing's a race. You don't have to go super fast. Now we're just gonna go into our opening. If your fingers don't fit, you can always just use a pair of hemostats or any type of pointy plier, tweezer type things. And I just go ahead and I put it right into, I'm tucking it into these teeth right here. Just making a little grab. I'm not closing it down tight or anything because I don't wanna press on the fabric. And then you just pull it right side out. Or you can scrunch it up like this and poke it out that way. Either way works. You just wanna make sure you get them all right sides out. Now, if these are round ones, you would do the same process. You would just go ahead and stitch on the inside of it all around in a circle. And then maybe you take your scissors and cut just a little snip into the seam allowance just to make it so it turns easily. Or you can go ahead and use some pinking shears. It'll just give you nice rounded edges. We're we'll doing a square one so we don't have to worry about that. Plus they stack nicely and they just, they're like I said, they're quicker to make. Now I take a crochet hook, this is nice and blunt, or whatever you might have that's a little bit blunt and you're not gonna poke through the fabric. I just come in and I kind of gently bring out those corners. I want everything to look nice and sharp. If they're not out 100%, it's a little bit hard sometimes with flannel. You end up with a little bit of a rounded corner like that. It's okay. Just poke them out to the best you can. Don't poke so hard that you go through the fabric. Otherwise, you'll have to turn it wrong sides out again and make it smaller and stitch a new you know, seam around it. The kids can help you with this part too. Give them something like a rounded plastic crochet hook. Those work really well. A pencil that's not really, doesn't have a sharp tip on it, maybe break off the lead and go ahead and use that. There's special turning tools that are rounded on the edge and that just allows the kids to go ahead and be part of the sewing. Or if they're a little bit older and they are sewing, they can go ahead and make these on their own. I'm gonna take them over and I'm gonna give them a good press everywhere. And when I do, I wanna tuck these ends in like this. I'll make it so it's nice and even across and I'm gonna give it a nice press and then I'll come back. So I went ahead and gave them all a nice press. I tucked in the edges so now I can go ahead and stitch them all closed. We're gonna stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. And this is another reason why I'm using the white thread because of the fabric I have on top. And then I have the white back here. I don't have to worry about any type of tension. If maybe if I chose to put a white in the bobbin and I had like a brown on top, I don't have to worry about any of the colors showing through in any of the weird places. So if the bobbin and the top thread match, everything is going to be good. Sometimes you get this little thread. You see that little bit of thread sticking out? If you can tuck it in, tuck it in. Otherwise, we'll trim it off after we go ahead and stitch around them. So let's stitch around them. 
Now at this point, I just suck it up. I'm gonna stitch around, top stitch each one individually. So it's, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it's okay. This is a really great gift project and stuff like that, and it's worth the time. This is my opening here. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side, just because I like to know that I've gotten it caught and I don't have to worry about it. Make sure everything looks nice and neat and even on it so both sides are together. I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch around. I like to bring my thread up to the top so I don't have any weird issues down below. Sometimes you can get a little bird's nest down below. So if you just bring your bobbin thread up, hold on to it for a second, take a stitch, and now you don't have to worry about it. This is eighth of an inch stitch all the way around. It just adds that nice little finish touch. And when it goes through the washer, it's going to wash nicely and through the dryer. It won't get any kind of weirdness going on. Sometimes when you have a piece like this, not as much with the smaller ones, but with the larger ones, it can get kind of crinkly and wrinkly and poofy and stuff. This way, everything's held nicely together. As you saw, when I got to the corners, I had to give it a little bit of an extra push to get it going. Sometimes when you're this close to the edge, it there's not enough of the material for the feed dogs to grab onto to pull it through. So you just give it a little extra support there to get it going. And then I'm gonna back stitch at the end to lock in those stitches. Then I can just go ahead and trim off my threads And then take that little piece that you can see sticking up from when I did the opening. That just pops right off, no problem. A little off of both sides. And there we go. So I'm gonna finish sewing these up and then at the end, we're gonna go ahead and talk about storage. Okay, so I have seven of these little autumn colored a puppy footprint makeup remover pads or I don't know whatever else you could use them for, but that's what they're meant for. And then they, they're they really quick to make. You can make a bunch of these. It took me less to make these than it took me to record the video because there's always the extras to talk about and all that, right? So I wanted to go through a couple little things to see how you're going to present these as a gift. Since we are considering these eco-friendly and they're reusable, we don't want to maybe wrap it up in paper or something like that. Maybe you want to save wrapping paper. You could always maybe pick up a bandana in a color they'd like and wrap it up in that. They could always use a bandana to hold their hair back when they're cleaning their face and stuff like that. If you're not too concerned about using plastic and stuff like that, or maybe you could find a glass one. I had these, these little baskets, they come from the Dollar Tree. You get three of them in a set for a dollar, so they could always stack them all in there. Maybe make one and take it. If you're thinking about this type of a storage container that you wanna present it in, maybe take these or your cardboard cutout to a store and see the different sizes. These are a little bit big in here. I know the Dollar Tree has clear plastic containers that it would look really nice sitting in like this or some metal wire baskets. If you wanna stay with the handmade theme, I have a round bin here. You could use it for your round ones or it still fits fine with the square ones. Or maybe you want to make a little drawstring pouch. You can put them in there and that would hide them as a gift. Maybe if you want to put anything else in there with it, whatever might go. If you want to purchase some makeup or the makeup uh, remover cleaner type stuff, if you're giving it to the little nieces and stuff, you can do that. If you prefer to have square ones with a square basket, you can go ahead and make them and stick them in there and make them any size you want. Maybe you want to have a little smaller basket like this. This is just a short one I use for my clips and they would stack in there nicely. This one is a little bit deep. So that would work also. Or you could just tie a ribbon around it and wrap it up in tissue paper because tissue paper can be reused or recycled, right? I'm going to put a link up in the iCard for if anyone's interested in making a little wrist cuff like this. These make great quick gifts. They're 
for people of all ages. They are great for my wrist. They get a little bit, a little sore, a little arthritic. So this heats up my wrist. So it's good for people like me. And then if you want to make them for some little fun cousins or something like that, it's another quick gift that even the kids can make that will be linked up there. I also have some videos for hair scrunchies and stuff like that. Just go ahead and check out the iCard at the end of this video and there'll be a bunch of links up there for you to check out. So before you put these up, maybe hit them with a lint roller. I am picking little threads off of them from the flannel picks up everything in the sewing room. And if you happen to have dogs or cats, their fur is going to get on it. So go ahead and get them all nice and lint rolled and put away. So if you enjoyed this project, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to see more quick holiday gifts, subscribe to my channel. I plan on doing more of them as we're leading up into the holiday season. It's good to have quick little gifts for people of all ages that you can make from things that you already have at home possibly, right? So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!